Hello and welcome back to the Gazelle Lab. This is Anthony again. Finally got my uh, my hands on a Nokia N8, so I thought I'd put it up against my HTC Desire. So I spent the last week and a half with the N8, uh, and obviously I've had the Desire since uh, about I think May or May or April last year. I actually just got a Desire HD. I'm just not ready to review that yet. That'll probably be out. In the coming weeks, I'll put it up against an iPhone 4, maybe against a Galaxy S. I'll see what uh, I'll see what devices I can pull together. So right now, this is about the Desire and the and the Nokia N8, which is still pretty new. It came out in October. This is uh, right now. I think it's five five hundred fifty dollars unlocked. I think I saw on Amazon for four fifty now. This is it's dropping in price, and the Desire is still fairly expensive, around I think five hundred since the Desire. HD came out, so it's dropped a little. Uh, let's start off with some uh, basic, uh, the basic specs. We have size 119, 60 by 12 millimeters on the Desire, compared to the little bit of thicker Nokia, which comes in at a 13 millimeters thick, 59 wide and 113. So, not not too much of a difference, but this is a little bit a little bit thicker. But both phones, fantastic build quality on both phones. Love the way the N8 looks, love the way it feels, love the way that my desire looks and feels too. Uh, when I was out with the N8, it, got, it does get a lot of looks. It looks a lot different than most phones. People ask you what it is, because uh, this 12 megapixel snapper on the back really stands out. We'll get into the camera in a bit, but it's, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, so like I said, in terms of other features, like uh, we have a, a 480 by 800 pixel 3.7 inch screen on the desire. And it's the AMOLED, and then over here we have capacitive AMOLED capacitive on the N8 as well. But this is a 360 by 640, but a 3.5, so it's not quite as good as the Desire. But uh, you can tell from the colors right now, the Desire does look a little bit nicer. Uh, they both have accelerometers, uh, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, 3G. The, the N8 does, it's great because I have T-Mobile, it did support the T-Mobile uh, 1700 AWS. It supports all the bands, 850, 900, 1700, 1900, 2100. Well, my desire is, uh, this version is the Eurospec 3G, so I'm still using it with Edge on T-Mobile here. And I know there's a, there's a US 3G version, so people always say that in my videos. Uh, this is running for Froyo 2.2, and this is uh, the new Symbian 3 OS. Uh, 5 megapixel on the Desire, uh, light flash, 12 megapixel Carl Zeiss with a Xenon flash on the Nokia N8. Honestly, one of the best camera phones I've ever used. Better than uh, the Xperia X10, the uh, Nokia N86, uh, W995. This is just fantastic, uh, fantastic camera on this phone. Uh, GPS on both devices, TV out on the, on the Nokia. It's classic Nokia, it also has t TV out. Uh, so like I said, stereo Bluetooth. In terms of processors, uh, the Desire gets you uh, the Qualcomm uh, Snapdragon, one gigahertz, uh, the older model compared to the new Desire HD. While the Nokia, which does feel, I'm not gonna lie, does feel kind of sluggish at times. And you can tell it has that 600, uh, well I think it's 660 or 680, the ARM11 processor. But it does have a 3D graphics and hardware accelerator. Games look really, really nice on it. So it does do gaming quite well. Uh, take a look at it this way. In terms of uh, ports, it, it uses the Nokia small pin charger, which is different. I, I've had Nokia devices in the past. I've had N95, N95, eight gigabyte. They've used them, and then all of a sudden, N86. I had and the E72 started using micro micro SD, and now this goes back to the small pin. So that I don't understand, which is kind of weird. Uh, on the sides of both devices. So you have a charging port on the Desire. On the sides of both devices, you have volume rockers. Uh, this is the unlock lock screen button, which is a nice change for Nokia. You don't really see that on a Nokia too often. Uh, and then on the other side, nothing on the Desire over here. Over here, you have your, your SIM card, your micro SD slot, and your, your USB connection over here, which is a strange cable. It's not like a standard USB. Uh, but there's no removable batter there's no removable cover over here so it's kind of like kind of like f the first generation iPhone a little in in material feel and style and uh, on top 
uh, 3.5 jack and power buttons on both. But over here you do get HDMI, which is really nice. I hooked up to my TV, it looks looks pretty good. Uh, so App Store, so over here you get the classic market, Android market, which is still, uh, it's good, one of the best markets out there next to the the App Store. And over here you get the, the Avi Store, which is, uh, much, it still needs a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie, there's not that many apps. It's, it's, it is picking up pace can, compared to when I ha first had my E72, but uh, it's still still missing a lot of stuff. So you can just see how, they're both on Wi-Fi right now, both these devices, so you can just see how uh, how slow they are. This, this phone was just reset, so I'm not signed in, I reformatted it. Uh, what else is there on these things? Uh, there are two two of the right now the the N8 is doing quite well in Europe. You don't really you don't see it in in the desires. The best obviously it was the best selling phone in Europe for 2010. But one thing you don't see Nokia too big in the U.S. because it's not subsidized by carriers. Uh, due to the, the hardware is quite expensive still. So a lot of uh, like AT&T picked up a couple devices. But you don't see the high end devices, which I think really hurts Nokia in the U.S. Here, you just don't see them coming here. So let's get into the cameras, the cameras real quick. Uh, like I said, it's one of the best things about the Nokia. It has a fantastic camera. The Desire, we've all seen before. I'll just take a quick picture. It's not bad. The Desire is still good. So it's like not a bad pick. It's decent. The the Nokia does take real good pictures. So it has a dedicated camera button, which I didn't point out before on the top. So you just push that. So it does take some brilliant shots. It actually takes some really nice shots outside in the light too. And it's got a, a like a lot of different a lot of different views. A lot of different shooting uh shooting modes which are nice. So I think yeah, probably the best thing about the N8 is the camera. The 12 megapixel camera. The UI on Symbian is I think still a mess. It's pretty horrible. It's just the dumbest smartphone I've ever used. And I'm, I'm a Nokia fan, I've used pretty much, I've all, only used Nokia until I got my Desire. And I wanted to love the Nokia N8, because I'm in love with the hardware. It's, I think it's one of, it's a really sexy phone, it's really nice, it just looks good. It feels nice, it's solid. The camera's great, video's great, it's, the speakers are decent, the battery life is okay. But the Symbian 3 is just a mess, it's just, to t send a text message, it takes you through four different screens. Uh, there's still no QWERTY in uh, portrait mode, so it took me like, now I'm, I'm not used to it anymore, so it takes me like 20 minutes to type a text message, so it's just, if this thing had Android, I'd probably, I'd probably be in my pocket right now, and I'd probably get rid of my desire, just because the hardware is fantastic. But that's like every Nokia, the hardware is amazing, and Symbian's just kind of a letdown. So I'm going to have to give the win to the HTC desire on this one. Just, it's a shame because I really like the Nokia, but the desire, I think, is still the top Android phone out there and still one of the top smartphones in the world. Uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for joining me on the Gazelle Lab. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gazelle Lab, for the latest in tech news. Thanks.